All right, so I'm finally gonna start this recipe. Here it is, I've been looking at it forever. Grandpa takes the cake. This is the recipe, that's the photo. Remember that, because I doubt that's how mine's gonna look. <laughs> and right now I am boiling or melting a half a cup of whole milk and four ounces of unsweetened chocolate. And I just use Baker's because that's what I have. It's on a double boiler. You can see it's just sort of a low simmer underneath. Got my music going on my iPod. And I've got some stuff prepared over here. It said to separate some eggs. I have some sour milk, which is um, whole milk with some vinegar in it. And I'm gonna have to cream this room temperature butter. Uh, it's said with a wooden spoon. I would prefer to use this doodad right here, but uh, I'm gonna do what the recipe says. All right, I'm mixing my dry ingredients. I just sifted and I just used this sifter, um, one and a half cups of flour. And I wanted to point this out because I actually, I've been baking for a long time and I never realized this and I've seen it on a couple of cooking shows lately. The baking powder tin is, is smarter than you think. <laughs> See how there's this little, um, like flat edge. You're supposed to use that when you're measuring to even out, level out your your measuring spoon. So for instance, I don't know if I can do this with one hand, but you would go like this and then you would scrape it. You know, obviously it's vertical, so it's just gonna fall off. But you scrape it against the side like that, so it's flat. Ingenious. At this point in the creaming process where I'm using my wooden spoon to mix the butter and the sugar and the egg yolks, and um, eventually this sour milk. I'm thinking that, you know, this recipe is old and it probably calls for a wooden spoon because that's all they had back then. This KitchenAid device probably didn't exist. So I'm thinking next time, I'm probably gonna use the KitchenAid because this whole stirring, stirring, stirring thing for the birds. Okay, I'm adding my dry ingredients to my wet ingredient, which is the um, butter, chocolate, egg yolk mixture um, and apparently they do embrace the electric mixer because I didn't read far enough ahead I have to beat the egg whites until they're stiff and then fold those into this okay so this is mixed my uh, oven just beeped to tell me that it's ready we are beating some egg whites they need to be stiff they're not there yet all right now I am not an expert at this egg white thing but I believe these are ready all right, so we're gonna fold these into uh, this. And it says to not do it very much. Um, you'll still see egg white. And I, it actually called for me to put a pan of water in the oven. And that sort of like, it steams up. And I know I've done it with cheesecake where it prevents the, um, the top from cracking. So I think it's just gonna help it to be moist. Yeah, I'm beginning to think these are over, <laughs> over beaten because they're like barely folding in. This is where the disaster of my baking always happens at these like technical parts. Okay, well, I hopefully this is evenly divided. It said you should be able to see some <laughs> egg white. And sure enough, you can. Let's get these in the oven real quick. That's our water. Good luck, little cakes. Bye bye. Well, this is the lesson that you should learn. Um, read the ingredients and the instructions from beginning to end. Frosting requires another double boiler, which is fine. Um, but it wants you to blend with a handheld electric mixer while it's on that double boiler. And even though I have my handy dandy KitchenAid mixer, uh, my handheld mixer I donated to my sister who just moved into her own apartment. So now I'm considering what sort of a disaster this is going to be considering in the instructions, the beginning part, it says uh, it'll take 15 to 35 minutes depending on how hot the water is and how fast you beat. So if I was upset at the fact that I had to beat cake, <laughs> can you imagine what this is gonna be like? Ay ay ay. I've had a stroke of genius, <clears throat> or perhaps it's just going to exacerbate the situation. But what about this KitchenAid tool, the Immersion Blender? I know the science is different, 
you know, the beaters kind of fold in air. I don't know what the heck this does, um, but I'm going to try it. I'm sure somebody out there is cringing because they, like, already know what's going to happen. But I don't know enough about the science to know why this might be a bad idea. Ooh. Almost done. All right. Let's check it out. It smells good. Let's check this out. All right, well, I've got my sugar and my egg whites and uh, water over a double boiler and, <clears throat> yeah, my immersion blender. I think I might need two hands for this, so I'm probably not going to be able to uh, demonstrate, <laughs> but I think you probably aren't going to want to see this. Okay, it's been two minutes <laughs> and I'm already, like, exhausted. <laughs> Cause I have to hold my hand up and the stuff is spraying all over me. My sister better use that blender I gave her. Jeez. So it's been seven minutes and the issue that I'm having is I just don't know what this is supposed to be doing. I've never made this before. So I don't know if this is working or not. You know, or if it's just not been enough time. The thing says it could take anywhere from 15 to 35 minutes. I don't know about that nonsense. So I don't know if I should switch to getting a whisk and just kind of beat the hell out of it. Or if, you know, I should wait for the at least 15 minutes to go by and see where we're at. I'd hate to be doing this for 15 minutes. And as it turns out, it's not working and then have to whisk for 15 minutes. But I don't know. I'll give it a little bit more time. All right, I have abandoned the immersion blender and I'm using the whisk. Um, it seems to be thickening up, but again, it could just be because more time has passed. You know, as you see with the uh, egg whites, it's just amazing what happens by just aerating them. Transforms into a totally different texture. Um, it kind of, this right now is sort of like a, a marshmallowy sort of texture. Um, you know, it's very watery, so clearly it's not ready to be frosting. And I only have two minutes of my 15 minutes left. So I'm thinking I'm going to be here for a little while longer. I have no patience. I know the egg is cooked. I just don't have the uh, physical manpower able to whip this thing. So I don't know. We'll see what this does. I'm sure, now that it's off the heat, it's going to totally throw off the science. Well, see? They're all disasters. Okay, it says to frost it before, eh, before the uh, frosting gets hard. And I'm kind of banking on the frosting getting hard. So uh, let's try it out. Yeah, so there's the first layer. Uh, kind of looks like marshmallow. <laughs> I just want to pause here and, uh, and remind us what this is supposed to look like. Now, now, mind you, I, I haven't um, drizzled yet, but and you probably can't see, but I can see that the frosting on the cake in the picture is frosting, not oozy marshmallow. Oh, look, this is about to come over the plate. And like gravity here in this case, not my friend. Here's another sign that my frosting is all wrong. This is how much I have left. I mean, clearly it just was intended to be another texture. If I had the mixers, I'm sure it would have been a success. It's really disappointing because, you know, I did spend a lot of time on this, as you can see. And uh, in the end, I'm just gonna have like a marshmallow cake or something. I mean, I guess as long as it tastes good, but it's just not what it was supposed to be. Colossal waste of time.